What's up my boys? Hope you are well. Today we're gonna do a bit of a fun video. It's not a super serious video, it's more for the fun of it. Yeah, because we made a video, Denmark versus Portugal. And you guys seem to uh, like that video, so now we're making a video, the Portuguese people versus the Danish people. This is obviously based on our opinions and, and experiences. Yeah, and we have been talking with some of our Portuguese friends about all these topics and obviously we know all our Danish people. We have five topics. Work, food, party, social and relationships. We are gonna start with the Danish people. When you compare Danish to Portuguese people in terms of their work ethic, Denmark is like... Scheduled. It's like nine to five work that's all you do you have 30 minutes uh, lunch, lunch break, break but you work and and you cannot take a private call you'll have to postpone the private call to after work yeah. you cannot just go and take a cup of coffee randomly with your work colleagues yeah. that's just a no-go but but, but if but if you're smoking that's okay you can take smoke breaks five uh, five minutes an hour is okay yeah actually. but if you don't smoke you can't take these five minutes <laughs> it's weird but it's true yeah but in Portugal, it's like you have to be at work all day from 9 to 9. I think in Portugal you also have the 9 to 5 hours. But because you are allowed to be a little bit late and you are allowed to take your personal calls and you are allowed to go and take your coffee when you feel like, the lunch break is an hour, some people even have more, mm. all these things. So that means that if you have to get the work done that you're supposed to get done, you'll have to work overtime. So the overtime culture is also a big difference in Denmark and in Portugal because in Denmark people, they do not work over hours. If I had a job here in Portugal where I had to just be at the work every day from 9 to 7 or 8, I would go crazy because um, we talked with a Portuguese who said like this is this is just what you're supposed to do. It's all about it's uh, a, it's show. It's like showing that you care, yeah. even though you're not doing more work as if you were laser focused for eight hours. Yeah, but I've actually been doing some uh, some research about this, and Portugal is definitely not the only country. You, you the States is very much like that. Mm -hmm. Asia, most corporate jobs in Asia, you yeah. work super late because it's a matter of respect. In Denmark, as soon as it's five o'clock, you make the Stanley, yeah. and you are just out of the door. Nothing will hold you back. <laughs> no. <laughs> in Denmark, it's not accepted to be late for yeah. work. People, they show up on time. If you don't show up on time three times in a row, you will get fired because every time you will get a, a warning saying, hey, why are you late? And excuses uh, have to be really good. Yeah. I mean, traffic is definitely not an excuse. No. Of course, this is only generally. There are buses that are much more relaxed. But in Portugal, for example, the buses are much more calm about this. They're like, okay, if you have an office job, fine, just work a little later. Yeah. I, I don't think I could have a job here in Portugal because we're too focused on, on work. I don't think you can have a job where you have a bus, really. That's impossible. You cannot That's tell true. you on what That's to do. True. That's true. Let's go to the next category. Food. We are going to begin with the Danish food culture because there's not much to say here. Danes, no. they do care about food, but not even close to as much as Portuguese people care. It's very sterile, uh, the Danish food culture. We have made a food vlog in Denmark where we show the actual good old uh, school food, uh, authentic Danish food, but Danes don't eat it anymore. And it's difficult to get your hand on today. Yeah. Nobody makes it anymore because people, they much rather want paleo or fancy food. It's, it's very much, uh, our food culture has very much been overtaken by the international cuisine, but not necessarily in a good way because Danes, they, it's a little bit of, you know, it's 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 very random. We the, get a taco, we get a white pizza, we get uh, some f uh, stir fry noodles, something yeah. like that. Uh, my, Over really good food. My general idea of Danish people and food is that food is more of a practical thing than something you really have to enjoy. But I mean, of course they they like food. I think they but do. I see a lot of families when they cook food every night. It is oven baked french fries, it's a lot of processed food, yeah. and there you go. It's not made with love, it's not where it's like, I make this 
dish the best in Denmark. Yeah. And, and I mean, there are people like me who just really love cooking and can spend hours in the kitchen cooking. So those kind of things does exist. But in generally, like you buy pasta that has to be boiled for two minutes and a, a pre-made sauce or a pre-made salad that you just have to turn around with some dressing. Like mm. it's fast cooking and Simple quick cooking. Food. Where our food culture does come to show is at holidays. So we have certain things that we eat for specific dates and holidays. And holidays. Holidays and holidays. <laughs> holidays. So for example, when somebody has a birthday, you need to have a cake man, like a mm. big cake man made out of pastry. So we do have some things, but it's not nothing compared to Portugal. Yeah, the Danes don't eat out very much. It's way too expensive, even for Danes with a proper income source, it's very expensive to go out for dinner. It is expensive in Denmark, like a beer at a restaurant is seven, eight, sometimes nine euros. A bottle of wine is always at least 25, 30 euros. That, that's why if you go out a family, it will be at least 150 euros and that's in the low end. That's in the very low end yeah. actually. So it's not a big thing in, in our culture no. to, to go out and eat very often. But in Portugal, everything changes because yeah. here in Lisbon, for example, there's Portuguese restaurants everywhere. And that is the best way to, 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 to tell how much Portugal loves their own kitchen. Yeah. Also, food in Portugal is everything. It's not just a matter of filling your belly with something nutritious. It's a matter of people and friendships and love. It's all about getting together, enjoying something and doing something nice for each other. In many ways, food is life in Portugal. That's at least how we uh, see it. And in our other videos with fun facts about Portuguese people, It, we, we, one of the fact is that when Portuguese people call each other, they would say, "What did you have for lunch today?" <laughs> That's the first thing when they when they talk. And one of our really good friends, Antonio, he often sends us like uh, tips on restaurants. Like yeah. he just paid the bill, and he's like, "Guys, oh, you gotta go here. You gotta try Dude, this." Dude, the arroz de pato here is amazing. You yeah. have to try it. <laughs> that is just so Portuguese, and we love that because yeah. we are a bit like that as well. Another thing that is very different here in Portugal is that. It's almost every single region or every single town has their own kind of dish that they prepare in a certain way. So you can have migas all over Alentejo, but there will always be like a little twist to the different mm. migas that you have. The culture is also a historical thing. Because there are so many festivals centered around food here in Portugal. Mm. That's how much they love food and that also shows that it's an old value. Like San Antonio where you um, mm, get grilled sardines. Yes. grilled sardines, lots of bread and everything is just centralized about the food and, and, the uh, and we love that and that's why we live here. Party culture. culture! Did you know that Danish people, they have the world record of drinking the most alcohol? Fifth years in a row. Some people would say that that's quite embarrassing, but to a Dane, it's not embarrassing at all. It's we're like, we're culture. Vikings! This is how we socialize. We get drunk, we get mm -hmm. more courage, and then we just uh, socialize quite a lot. Everything social is literally surrounded by Drinking okay. alcohol. It's like if I've had 30 days of non-alcohol, which has happened once, I can't go out with friends. What are we gonna do? Uh, bowl? Uh, no, well... Yeah, drunk bowling. Yeah. Do you want to go for a game of golf? Yeah, okay, remember to bring a six-pack. Yeah. That's just how it is in Denmark. And sometimes it even seems like the goal is to get drunk. It is to get drunk, <laughs> Amelia. Yeah. That's, that's life in Denmark. Yeah, What yeah. else are we gonna do? It's the most stale uh, nature, the weather is awful. In Denmark, the party culture always starts at home. So people, they will gather at home and get blindly drunk together. The reason why we do this is because it's way too expensive to go out and drink. It, it actually is possible to, to drink uh, beer. You can get beers uh, for two, uh, three euros at uh, some yeah, of the yeah. brown pubs. But it's But yeah, if a lot you, of people don't want to go there. Because if you go out sober and yeah. get drunk, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. When Danish people have gotten completely wasted, 
then they will go out and they will uh, socialize and they will be embarrassing and they will meet a lot of new people that they just fell in love with the same night like we you and i we're best pals yeah. and then the next day you see them down in the supermarket and you don't even say hi this is not only in denmark i, I find this is generally when you go out and, and drink and you meet new people when there's alcohol involved it's it's like it doesn't happen because everything that you plan and arrange and next time we're gonna, you know, come eat at our place, it never happens. So it's like so fake. Another thing is that Danes, they often get drunk without having food involved. So we will eat at home something boring and fast mm -hmm. and then we will meet each other and then we will get drunk together. And I mean, this says a lot about the Danish food, food culture. culture. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not important. It's, no. I'm sure in Portugal they eat for dinner together yeah. and then they drink. Well, let's move on to the Portuguese people because they know how to party. <laughs> I think Portuguese people are very similar in, uh, with, with Danish people when it comes to partying. I think the way that it's done, that the fact that you have to get drunk at home because it's too expensive to go out, I think that's the same. Mm -hmm. But in Portugal, if we are invited to a party, there's always snacks or barbecue or some mm. small things you can eat. And also they invite everybody. Everybody is welcome to a Portuguese party where in Denmark you can sit at the office and like five people at, at the office is gonna make arrange like a party. Mm. But some people are not invited and we are being openly uh, yeah. talking there about it. There can be it, two right? people like right next to who probably would like to come but they're not invited like they're danish not good people friends. danish people are assholes when it comes yeah. to that <laughs> i've no, i've experienced this myself and i've been the two persons not getting invited portuguese are, are much more laid back and it's like yeah you can come they have much more of a yeah. whatever mindset it's yeah. like sure whatever yeah. yeah you can come but also portuguese people they don't have to be plastered to get fun to have fun but i don't get that we have been to like you know Friday evenings at a kiosk where people are just dancing and having fun without being wasted. Mm. And I really like that because in Denmark, all Danes, including me and Jon, we have to be super drunk to have the courage to go on the dance floor, right? Uh, yeah, well, I never go to the dance floor. But well, also, Danish people are not as good dancers as Portuguese. I'm an excellent dancer, though. <laughs> Like what, one example of how inclusive Portuguese people are when it comes to partying is that they don't have any problem partying with their older grandmas. We are gonna move on from partying to being social. And we might as well segue from our recent example of sitting at the office and planning on going out and then leave a couple of uh, colleagues behind. Yeah. Because Danish, Danish people are so... They love clicks. They they always it clicks, clicks, yeah. clicks, clicks, and they don't want to be interrupted with strange faces. <laughs> Mostly not, no. I mean, Danes are not easy. They are difficult to get to know. However, when you know a Dane, you do have a really good and loyal friend. When you get a Danish friend, you have that friend forever. But getting yeah, but but getting to know them is is almost impossible. So. For example, most of my friends in Denmark, they go all the way back from primary school. Like in your mid twenties, it's you don't really meet uh, new people that just become your 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 buddy for life. No. Uh, I mean that's. I mean a, a lot of my friends are actually. Yeah. From my twenties. But I mean, you, yeah, sure, you'll meet them at university. Yeah, exactly. But generally, you know, the true core. Of yeah, friends. they are the older friends. They are the the real the, the, the back way back from. Yeah. You know, you feel like those are the people that you really just click with. The main way that Danes are socializing is with uh, alcohol. But the next thing is with the dinner party with a lot of alcohol. During summer, I find that Danes they are more out for just a afternoon beer and then that's it. It doesn't have to be hardcore drinking all the time. No, summers it's, are more, Yeah. summers are just better. People are much more relaxed. It often transpires into an all-nighter, but I've had, I've tried it. I've tried going to the park with a few beers and then stop there. Have after, you? Yeah, well, wow. I can count it on, 
on a one toe. on one hand. Yeah. Basically, there's not a lot to the Danish way of socializing because it is just alcohol. That is the foundation of hanging out together. That I, is it, most it, most of it is alcohol. It really is. Yeah. It really is. We also spend a lot of time with family in Denmark, but only the inner circle of your family. You never really see your great mm aunt or whatever you really you never see those people it's like parents mm -hmm. and grandparents and siblings yeah. that's it that's all but that's very different from portugal yeah because in portugal you see all your family yeah. cousins of cousins and ex-boyfriends of your cousin everybody <laughs> is family it's it's much more open-minded but I but think. one of the main reasons i think is that in denmark a lot of people they move out mm -hmm. when they're 18 we both moved out when we were 16 17 so you're very focused on everything around yourself because it's not easy to be living uh, in your own apartment or room when you're 18 because you don't earn any money and it's not cheap in denmark so I think that explains why we don't have did this. Did you pay rent though? Uh, <laughs> you did not pay rent. I, did, I forgot to mention it was my, my mother's apartment yeah, yeah. I moved into. Stop yeah, making yeah, it yeah, sound yeah, so yeah, tough. Yeah. I'm, I was exemplifying the general young okay, being. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm spoiled little brat, I know. Okay. But On that note, we are going to continue to the Portuguese people. Yeah. Because Portuguese people, they are social animals. They love being social, they love making new friends, they are interested in knowing about other people and where they come from and how they are as people. Mm -hmm. Portuguese people, they love interacting. Family is everything in Portugal. They exercise it uh, almost every weekend, it seems. Uh, I don't know exactly how often the Portuguese people, they, yeah. they go together or meet with the whole family, but it's probably a couple of times a month. I mean, here where we live in Ashuda, when we look down in the area that we live just out of our window, there are very often like tables where you have the grandfather, grandmother, all the grandchildren, mm. everybody is surrounded and that's almost every weekend. Portuguese people are also hospitable. We have said this many, many times. They always invite people in. Like, they can invite us in if they, if the girl who does my nails, she would invite me for a party mm. if she likes me. If you meet people, you like them and you're Portuguese, why not invite them for a party? And for Danes, that's very uncomfortable. Never because happens. Because that doesn't happen in Denmark. So when people, they invite us, we feel like it's, you know, a rhetorical invite that they don't expect us to act on. The fifth and last point is a relationship. The intimate relationship, not friend between, but um, actual relationships. Actual relationships. Husband and wife. Danes are super liberal when it comes to sex. Danes are a bit loose, if you will. Where Portuguese people, they wanna get to know each other before just humping around. I, you know, I don't really know how much Portuguese they hook up, but my impression is that they like to tease each other, yeah. especially the women. They dress. They, they often dress very uh, outgoing. Oh yeah. Um, but I feel like it's they, they flick. I think it's they like to flirt and they like to get the attention a lot. But they don't really want anyone to act on the attention. They have to 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 screen any potential uh, partner a number of times. Uh, before they, 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 they end up. Because it's not only a matter of sex, because it's a matter of something more. In Denmark, I think we both have friends. I think you have even been on the same row, right? Where you go out to hook up. I, I've never done that, ever. That, I'm not like that. We have friends who go out just to hook up. And of course that can also happen here in Portugal, but it happens quite a lot in Denmark. And it's okay, It's not. there's nothing to be ashamed of about but it. But I think the main difference is that Portuguese people, they are more rooted in, in, in the religious yeah. uh, mindset that you shouldn't just go hook up with anybody because if you're, if, it's not long ago that you have to be married before you can even see what's underneath the dress. Yeah, Nordic countries has always been known to be more liberal, yeah. and that's why Denmark, Finland, Norway. And I, you know, like I, I, I actually like that about Denmark. That it's not a, a magical trick every time two people they 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 want to have some fun. But since we are so liberal, that also has a bad side to it because 
Denmark is the second most unfaithful country on this planet. There's a lot of people in Denmark who is not married before they get their first kid. Mm, yeah. That is quite normal that you first get your kid and then you can get married down the road. A marriage is not that important, to be honest. One big difference between uh, Portuguese and Danish people is that uh, Portuguese people, they don't have uh, any issue being friends with the opposite uh, sex, where uh, Danish people, I mean, I don't have any female friends, really. Yeah. You have one, but you don't... Yeah, that's actually true. I don't have any female friends, and I think most men agree with that in Denmark, that, you know, why would I be friends with a woman? Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not into her. <laughs> I actually had a lot of friends once and then I broke up with my ex and all my good friends all of a sudden started, mm. you know, trying to hook up with me. So I lost all my male friends and now I only have male gay friends. Yeah, that's <laughs> Danish people are sluts. It's said that Portuguese people can be quite jealous. But if that's the case, I reckon that I have Portuguese blood in my streams because I'm quite jealous. Yeah. Do not look at my boyfriend. <laughs> At all. She will hunt you down, taken style. I will find you. And I will kill you. But another thing that is very important when it comes to relationship here in Portugal is that your partner is accepting and being kind towards your family. That is the key to a good relationship here in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And if your family does not like the guy or the girl that you brought home, it can be tricky. You know, I've heard that a lot of Portuguese people they actually move in with their parents even after being married and I, I don't think, think it's a lot though but I, I have heard it as well they 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 do it okay and and I mean that is crazy crazy in my mind because imagine if we had to live with my parents I, I, like I mean your parents, I would though. I would go I love my parents I would go absolutely crazy you drive too fast you speak too high yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that's my yoga son I'm so sad to say goodbye <laughs> to you mother yeah. how do you do it let me know so to sum it up Danish and Portuguese people are very similar in some ways, but also very different yeah. in some ways. And also we have talked to a lot of our friends about how their life is to make this video. And I will also link to an article below about Portugal and Portugal culture. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Are we wrong? Are we right? What are we wrong about? What can you add to uh, either of the people we are talking okay. about? That was it, guys. Muito obrigado por ver o vídeo. Até logo. Até logo.